So as I'm sure everybody knows by now, over the past four days, there was the GMTK 2024 Game Jam. And for the first time ever, I decided to actually make a submission. Pretty much everything that could go wrong went wrong. First off, it's 3 p.m. and I just woke up because I stayed up all night working on my submission because I accidentally got the date wrong. You see, it all started on August 18th. I had planned to enter the GMTK Game Jam on August 18th, thinking that that's when it started, but it actually started on August 16th, meaning that when I eventually went to start my game, I was already two days late, so I only had a day and about 17 hours left to make my game, which realistically, assuming that I don't stay up all night and all day, means I only have two days left to make this game. And at this point, I hadn't even seen the theme, which I guess serves me right for not joining the Discord or like putting a timer on it. But instead of just giving up, I decided to actually go ahead and try and make something in just those two days. The theme was built to scale, and this could be interpreted in a lot of different ways, but I decided to do something that was really easy because I didn't have enough time to make something that was more complicated. So I decided to go for a Pong-like game, but the twist is that the better that you play, the larger that your enemy paddle grows, and the more that you shrink. Which means that as you win round after round, it actually just gets harder and harder, and your enemies are literally scaling with the progression. Overall, the actual development of the game did go pretty smoothly, because it's pretty much just Pong. The actual physics for working everything out was pretty straightforward. I think the most interesting thing about this was probably the visuals. I decided to go a completely different route than what I'm used to. Most of the time I just make like some platformer pixel art or something for game jams because that's just what I'm used to. But this time I decided to do something a little bit different. I went into Photoshop and started drawing up a bunch of these sort of glow masks. It's a really easy way to just make something that's really simple look really nice because when I go and put these in my actual game engine, I can just write a couple of really simple shaders for like neon colors and just like really bright red or blue colors or something like that and just layer them over those textures that I just drew and you get like this really cool sort of Tron or like neon style like art. Pong is sort of an arcade game anyway and having all of those like bright RGB colors makes it feel more like an arcade game and not to mention that making the assets themselves is actually really easy because it's mostly just squares and rectangles and circles so I don't really have to think too much about it. I just sort of like drew a circle in Photoshop using the circle tool and then put an outer glow of white so that way I could just like apply a shader over the white mask of the sort of white outlines and it ended up looking pretty cool in the end. The Pong physics themselves were pretty straightforward. You pretty much just have a ball that goes in a certain direction. It just takes the direction that the ball is already traveling in and then takes the direction of the other object of where it's looking. So like if the ball hit the player and it was facing backwards, it would bounce to where the player is facing. There were a couple of bugs, which there usually is when you're making a game. After I had finished programming and creating all of my assets, I decided to add some polish and sound effects. So that meant things like adding some music for the menu in the game and also some particle effects for pretty much every action in the game. I think the most difficult thing for me to implement this game jam was probably the leaderboard system. When you play the game based on how many rounds you've won, you'll get a certain score and when you end up quitting or if you lose, you'll get sent back to the main menu and that score will then be logged into the leaderboard. I ended up using Loot Locker to do this. I've actually used it once before in the past for another game jam and it just works really really well. It's super easy to make a basic leaderboard that's just based off of a player's name and a score, but since it had been over a year since I've actually used it, I did have to go through and read all the documentation on how to set it up again, which is why it probably took the longest out of anything in this game jam. So if you guys want to go and get on the leaderboard, all you have to do is just play like one round or something like that. So you might be thinking, well everything looks like it's going pretty well. I had 8 hours left and my game was perfectly fine. It was working well, it had a good gameplay loop, it was polished, it had sound effects, what could possibly go wrong? Well, it turns out that there was a slight bug in the leaderboard system, which meant that you couldn't scroll up or down to see who had the top score and the bottom score, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of a leaderboard to begin with. So I found the bug and I fixed it within like 5 minutes. It was really no big problem, but of course you can't make any submissions to your game once the deadline has passed, and at this point the deadline had already passed, meaning I couldn't upload new builds of my game. But as someone who hasn't done a game jam in a very long time, and as someone who was very tired from working on the game, basically pulling an all-nighter, I didn't realize this. I completely forgot that I couldn't upload another build of my game. So I went to my itch page and I deleted my zip build of my HTML. And when I went to go and upload it, I found out that I could not in fact 
upload a new build. So at this point I was thinking, oh, well that's fine, I just won't press the save button and it'll just go back to the way it was before. But that's not how it works on itch. Once you press delete file in your game page, it doesn't matter if you press save. That file is gone forever. So there I was with having a completely finished and polished game with the page that I was happy with and there was no game for people to play. The worst part about this isn't that it's not going to get rated by people, but it's that no one can actually play the game. So what I decided to do as a form of damage control was to just create a duplicate page for the game that was not related to the GMTK game jam and just put the game up on there and put the link to that game in the description of the one that I submitted for the game jam. Even though it won't actually get rated anymore for the game jam itself, at least people can still play the game. Overall, I think I learned a pretty valuable lesson. Next time I do a game jam, I'm submitting my project and I am not touching it at all until I know for sure that the voting is completely over and that I can actually edit and upload new files to it. But aside from that slight mishap, I'm actually pretty happy with how the project ended up turning out. Even though I didn't have as much time as I wanted, it's still pretty fun and I like the idea of having a leaderboard so I can see how many people were actually playing the game. It was nice to also branch out a little bit and try making a completely different style of game than I've ever made before. I've never made an arcade game or a game that doesn't use pixel art graphics. And even though it was pretty stressful at times, I think I did learn quite a bit and I'll take that knowledge with me the next time that I join a game jam. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take a shower. I probably smell absolutely awful right now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys want to support future videos or be notified of future videos when they do come out, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you want, you can go ahead and join our Discord. We have a pretty big community over there of a whole bunch of game developers and artists and composers and things like that. It's honestly a pretty fun place to just hang out. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.